They tried to pull him out of his car. He put it in reverse, ran over someone and killed a lady, and they were trying to set him on fire. I can't get my dog off the guy. He is not releasing. I think that was the scariest I've ever been in my life. You know, shots being fired and, and cars being set on fire. I was scared to death. Tell us what's going on with these riots or maybe what started well, it. Well, um, there was a change of presidents over in Little Haiti, and I guess they didn't like who was coming in. In Haiti. In Haiti, yeah. And then we had a, a large Haitian community. In Little Haiti. In Little Haiti. Community in, in Miami still there now. Right. And um, apparently uh, the, the Haitians in Miami were upset what was going on. And uh, they started uh, breaking into a couple of businesses. And I remember they were broken into a records and tape store. The alarm apparently went off. The alarm company called the owner. The owner shows up in the car with his wife. And they're up on the roof and going through the roof, the breaking windows. And when they saw the owner, they think and thought that he also had something to do with the president over there. They didn't like him. They tried to pull him out of his car. Uh, he put it in reverse, ran over someone and killed a lady. Then he tried to escape in his car out of the neighborhood. He was not able to get out of the neighborhood. He jumped out of his car, him and his wife. The Haitians grabbed him, took him in the back of the of house and put tires on him. I guess that's what they do in Haiti. And they were trying to set him on fire. At that time, one of our majors, Jerry Green, showed up, pulled out his gun to try and save this guy. And the major accidentally shot himself in the hand. So when he got shot, they yelled on the radio, shots fired, police officer down. So they, we, our canine unit went in there and it happened to be a training day on a Wednesday where all the dogs were there. So we went in there and at the time they were setting cars on fire, turning cars upside down, putting rags in the gas tanks. It was, uh, shots were being fired. And this just happened like from nothing to yes. full on riot. Yes. First one I really been into. Um, so we were trying to keep the Haitians away from the cars and away from the businesses, setting them on fire. So we were actually running down the street with our dogs and the Haitians would be running from us. This daytime, nighttime? This is uh, late afternoon, noon, early evening. And um, I can remember hearing banging noise as we're running down the street with our dogs, trying to keep them away from these businesses. And it, it was actually people running, looking at our dogs and running in parked cars. It was crazy. Um, I mean, they're running so fast, but so scared of the dogs. Oh, yeah. So we weren't biting anyone. We were just trying to keep people away. But the dogs got so um, fired up. So, um, matter of fact, I, I looked down at my dog and his teeth were shattering. Just going like that. How, how long is this going on for? Uh, probably 45 minutes to an hour, at least. And um, and for, for the folks at home, it's like the dogs, there's a lot of yelling, screaming, oh, people running. Oh, but you can't really engage, so the dogs can't really satisfy their urge to, to bite. Yes. And so it's just pent up. Oh, yeah. So um, <clears throat> I remember a policeman next to me. He got hit in the face with a rock. He fell down on the ground, got back up, and he ran into the crowd. This was a tough guy, officer. Um, and they were beating up him a little bit. So I went up with my dog. My dog engaged on one of the uh, riders on the thigh. And the crowd took off, but then the crowd started coming back towards us. They like swell and ebb and flow. Yeah. Anyway, they're coming, coming back at us. My dog, I can't get my dog off the guy. He is not releasing. I'm trying to do everything I can. So I remember a sergeant coming up to me. He says, really calm. Gordon, I used to be in canine. I have my nightstick, my PR-24. I'll stick it in your dog's mouth while you try and choke him off. And I won't, I'll try not break your dog's teeth and I'll just get him off. Because these rioters are coming for blood now. And yeah. your dog's pretty occupied, I guess. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I, I felt I had nothing to defend myself because I couldn't get my dog off. How many How many rioters are oh, right there? There's got to be, you know, 125 right now in versus, this little crowd. Versus you. And a couple other officers. And anyway, um, finally got the dog off. But when I got the dog off, he got so frustrated, he bit me in the leg. It wasn't bad. So... And all is said and done. Everything's pretty much calmed down now. And um, we have a briefing. And a sergeant wants to know 
how many guys or how many people we bit because we had no prisoners. It's not like we apprehended somebody and arrested them. Yeah, because well, every, every time we bit somebody, the crowd would grab them and carry them away. So we all looked at each other and about six of us raised our hands. And um, I'm saying, Sarge, how are we going to write a, a bite report? We don't know who we bit. And he says, we just put it down as John Doe. We'll deal it with it later. So I noticed one of the canine officers was not there. I said, so where's Bobby Myers? And um, Sarge says, oh, he's at the hospital. He got bit by his own dog and another canine dog. I said, well, how did that happen? Again, Bobby was trying to keep the crowd away. Dog getting frustrated. His dog turned around, latched onto his leg. Another canine officer wasn't paying attention. His dog was way out on a six-foot leash and bit his other leg. So he had his own dog on one leg. I mean, this this was terrible, <laughs> terrible. Uh, so anyway, um, the Haitians ended up uh, suing us. We went to federal court, had to testify in federal court. And I remember the defense attorney saying, Officer Wing, on this day in Little Haiti, would you... Would you describe it as a, a jubilant celebration? And I just about lost it on the stand. I said, jubilant? Let me tell you something. I think that was the scariest I've ever been in my life. Um, you know, shots being fired and, and cars being set on fire. I was scared to death. Anyway, uh, they didn't win the lawsuit. The city prevailed. They didn't get any money. But um, it was no walk in the park for any of you. It, bit, it was no walk in the park for any of you. Was no, it a jubilant no. celebration? Yeah. You guys getting bit by your own dogs? Yes. It, it, and let's talk about that for a minute before anyone says, like, why would a police dog bite their own handler? This this is a lack of training. This is, uh, this is what, what would you say about that? This is, oh, because it's back in the 80s and, and dogs don't do that anymore. Yeah, but... Uh, Which is know, not the truth. I just right. want you to explain... How many times have you seen that happen? Why does it happen? Well, why would a dog they, I don't bite they, its own handler? They, they just get frustrated. They get frustrated. And they just kind of lose it. And uh, and keep in mind, these dogs. I mean, they have ten more teeth than humans. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, a lot of bite pressure. If you like this short clip and you want to see the full podcast episode, make sure to check out our other channel, Garrett Wing. All the links will be below.